Awesome. So today we have Natalia. She's the author of If Stars Could Speak, which is a poetic journey of spiritual alchemy as taken off of your blog. Um, and I've read some of your work and I just absolutely love it. I wanted to know more about the story behind your story. Like the story you wrote, I want to know your story and kind of like, you know, all about that. And I also wanted to say thank you for creating art because I think especially through the work that I've seen you do is I've always thought poetry is so interesting because you could turn one word into an entire story. You could also turn something as abstract and big and bold as spirituality and make it into a more beautifully deduced, you know, poem. So I wanted to say thank you for, that means <laughs> for doing that and sharing it. So much to me. That really, I really, really appreciate you saying that. <laughs> um, yeah, like, you know, my spirituality and my poetry, they are just like one thing for me. You know, I tie them mm -hmm. together. They really parallel each other. And for me, the journey started, I would say back in 2016, late 2016, I was going through some challenges in my life and it kind of just set off this uh, quest to really go inner and go inward and discover mm -hmm. myself and really like essentially a spiritual awakening where I just wanted to, I questioned, I began to question everything, you know, and kind of going through that process of just seeing my life and then also understanding like what my core beliefs were um, and then having the strong desire to basically like understand why I made certain decisions in my life. So basically, you know, a lot of just inner, tra inner transformation. Mm -hmm. So it led me into art, actually art. I was using art as like a tool for my spirituality and my spiritual awakening. So I was like, <laughs> thank you. I was constantly consuming art, you know, like I was constantly listening to music as like kind of like my own self therapy. Um, listening to a lot of like empowering music, a lot of um, like high frequency type of songs and music. Mm -hmm. and, um, that was just helping me like process a lot of emotions that I was going through. And then I was also, I kind of, I was introduced to this um, surrealism and like, you know, the art of using symbolism and also to kind of let your unconscious and subconscious self get released essentially. And to mm -hmm. like have anything that was repressed kind of just come to the surface. So I, I became like obsessed with this idea of like surrealism and art and using art to like just self-reflect and to understand yourself and to raise your consciousness and your, um, yeah, basically like your ascension. Mm -hmm. I love it. Were you always kind of like spiritual or was it kind of like that one big boom, that one spiritual awakening that kind of like spiraled into more? Right. That's a good question. I think in the past, I've always been interested in the idea of spirituality. Like it was coming it coming into my awareness and glimpses it wasn't like i was completely spiritual but i was i felt like i was always like in tune with others and very mm -hmm. empathetic very very like empathetic very sensitive with people and just wanting to just you know like be a loving person you know and i you know that's like the core of what i see spirituality is so i think i always had that innate in me to like want to do good for others and to like want to do good for the world and i studied sociology because i looked at sociology as a way to understand uh, people and so mm -hmm. that was like that was basically all I wanted to do is just understand people and wanting to help others and serve others in some way so essentially in that perspective I was I, I wasn't completely aware of spiritual concepts but little little by little like I think in college I was starting to get the ideas of law of attraction starting to come through me come to me through like you know youtubers and i was like oh mm -hmm. my sister at the time she kind of sent me a few videos here and there of like you know someone speaking of law of attraction i was like oh wow that's so interesting and then i just kind of got more into it little by little but i didn't have like full-on awakening awakening until like late 2016 where i actually started doing the inner work mm -hmm. you know, like for like for a while almost like the concepts the ideas were coming to me of like oh, there's, you know, law of attraction, there's vibration. And it was just understanding on a mental level, but like not until I started actually like doing the inner work that I started experiencing spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you are, you know, you know what, what I mean about that. It's like, when yeah. you're, you know, um, you know, it's one thing to like understand something like conceptually, but then another thing to actually apply it and to see the mm -hmm. results in physical reality. And you're just like, wow okay <laughs> i love that you said that because my my favorite phrase is like it's one thing to know and another thing to like fully understand like i i can know that 
that you are upset about something, but do I understand it? Do I feel it? You know, like those two things are so different. And I'm someone who really likes to be understood because I, I did read that you were like a highly sensitive person, which I want to get to later, but I'm the same way. So I deeply understand people. Mm -hmm. So when it's not returned, it's obviously not their fault, but I'm a little like, but how do you not understand? I know you know that I'm upset, but how do you not feel it? How do you not understand it? Which I mean, great for them for, you know, not soaking up my emotions like a sponge, um, but I still yeah. feel that like frustration. So definitely marking that as my inner work, but I love that you said that because it it is so true. Like yeah. it's one thing to know these things exist, but another thing to like feel it and be a part of it and, and embody this. I love it. Absolutely. And I feel like when you are feeling it and you are embodying it, I feel like that's our way of connecting with other people. And it's just like, it's such a powerful, powerful thing to feel connected with others. You know, we just mm -hmm. we need connection as human beings. And I think that maybe even people that are not so empathetic, or maybe they're not aware that they can be, you know, maybe they just haven't like unlocked that part of themselves. But I think like, it seems like you're very empathetic like me. So it just kind of naturally feels that way. Like we just naturally just feel others emotions. But of course we have to learn how to also have that like healthy boundary. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, doing like the inner work, it's like you start realize. And, and also another thing is I feel like the more inner work you do, the more you understand others. And so I yeah. loved, I loved that part of like just spirituality and, you know, realizing that is like the more I connect with myself, the more I can understand others. And that gives me also understanding of the world. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's just all tied in together. Like the more we understand ourselves, the more we understand others, the more we understand the world. And yeah, knowledge is power, like self-knowledge. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like it, it's made me softer because when you understand yourself and you're understanding other people, you're less harsh and you're less like, why did you do that? Because you just get it. You're like, oh, I bet something happened in your childhood. And it like, it's not even the psychoanalyzing people. It's just like, oh, I understand that you probably had something happen. And that's why I'm for some reason triggering you and you're projecting it onto me. And that's okay. It's yeah. okay. And just leaving it there. And like I definitely, before I was kind of like awakened to all of this, I would definitely go through the spiral of like, why are people doing this? Why is it like this? Why is this happening? Now I'm just kind of like, oh, <laughs> what am I supposed to learn? What lesson is coming up here? What am, what am I teaching this person? What is this person teaching me? And so it makes it a lot more fun, I think, to live life. So like, true. And that's so beautiful. And it, like, it just shows that the logic that's involved within spirituality too, is that it's, it's not just, you know, like, you know, this not understanding kind of like metaphysical, not really grounding it, but it's extremely grounded and extreme mm -hmm. logical, extremely logical because then you start to see the cycles, you know, you yeah. start to see like the belief systems and then how it's also connected to you. And like you said, how, you know, our own selves or others, like how they project their own things onto others. So you're like, okay, I get it. And when you get mm -hmm. it, you don't have that feeling of wanting to get um, triggered so much, you know? Yeah. So I think that's the greatest self-discipline is like knowing ourselves. Mm -hmm not you know allowing the projections of others to trigger us but also seeing mm -hmm. that as like a lesson to learn ourselves yeah like a, a mirror like everything is just kind of reflecting itself and that's essentially why i love to write so much is because i feel like i see everything as like a reflection and like a symbol and so through like poetry i feel like i can dive into symbolism and also connect it with our emotions and like our inner inner world our inner challenges and our inner struggles in like um yeah like in a short story type of form you know mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i love that so you talked about being grounded and everything and i love that your book one uses symbolism but also uses nature as such a big symbol like for example you use fire as spirit right mm -hmm. so can you kind of break down how you came to that like decision of like this represents this and like how the elements are all something in your book right right so when I kind of got introduced a little bit to the idea of like alchemy and seeing um, the four elements of fire, you know, air, water, and earth, I was very, very intrigued and pulled to this idea and just kind of seeing them as general representations of the external world, but also internal world. So then I started seeing, okay, well, how does fire, the element of fire, how can I understand its physics, its physicality, but then also see it internally, you know? So its connection to spirit is basically just a symbolic reflection of how it interacts, how spirit goes. You know, when you see fire, fire can grow and fire brings light and fire brings energy. Um, and so that's kind of, it was my way of also understanding the way my inner 
inner fire is. Mm -hmm. so, so it's like when I, when I was writing, it's like, I was reflecting on nature. I was reflecting on the fire, but then also I was tying it into like, well, how does that play into my own spirituality of the spirit within me, you know, and like the way that the spirit can move, the way that the fire can grow. And that also, you know, the idea of, you know, when you light a candle, but it could also turn into a forest fire and just the playing around with kind of like the idea of fire and kind of looking at fire as more of like a, a divine symbol mm -hmm. in the universe, like seeing the divinity of like nature and seeing the beauty of fire and, uh, and how it ties into us internally. Mm -hmm. I love it. I always refer to nature because I'm someone that like, if I could live outside, I would, I do everything outside. I eat outside. I do my work outside. I just love being there. And it just, it does speak to you if you're, if you're open and willing to listen, which is so beautiful. Um, so I want to know if you ever had, because I know I've had my like weird interactions and talks with trees and stuff. If you've ever had like an almost like spiritual conversation uh, with nature, you know? Oh yeah. I, I, I feel like when I, I, I gravitate a lot to just nature in general, but I always go to the ocean. I live close to the mm. ocean. So I live like about like 15 minutes away. So whenever I want to just go connect with nature, I just go sit by the ocean and I just stare into the ocean and I just feel that energy of the ocean. And I feel like the ocean also symbolically, it gives me permission to just feel my emotions completely because mm -hmm. I'm in the presence of the element of water. And so nothing greater than that, you know, when you go in the presence of the element of water, then the, the water is itself, it's, it's, it's a manifestation of what it is. So then when I'm going there, I feel like I'm tuning into my emotions. So every time I go into nature, I kind of, I feel like, like a switch happens and my, my logical conscious mind kind of slows down. And then I feel like a more feeling based consciousness comes up and so mm -hmm. I feel like a feeling based consciousness and I'm tuning into my feelings, then I'm like feeling nature. And I feel like in a way we communicate through that, through the energy. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. when I'm feeling nature, then I get inspired with words because it just comes, you know, like through the inspiration through words. And because I'm in such a peaceful, relaxed state, I feel like I receive that inspiration very easily and very fluidly because I've let go of like my logical mind who wants to understand things in a very logical way. And mm -hmm. this is that, this is, that, you know, all that past, you know, programming of ideas. I feel like I'm just kind of like sitting in the presence of something greater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that even ties into what we talked about before of understanding people. For some reason, when I go outside, I feel a oneness with nature. And I'm like, if I'm feeling a oneness with like, if I'm seeing myself and feeling myself vibing with a tree and like the grass and, and feeling support of, of the wind, then like everyone has that, you know, like everyone can go outside generalizing i'm sure i'm sure everyone deep in the core can do that can go outside and just feel that little bit more of a connection with themselves and with other people and i love that it gives me that sense of of oneness because sometimes obviously like it is a struggle sometimes to right. to get in the loop of comparison especially in an age like this with social media um but that's something that i love about it because i could go outside and i'm connecting with nature but mm -hmm. through the connection of nature, I'm connecting with other people without them even being there. And yeah, it's such a beautiful experience. Well said. Yeah, that's so true. Because when you're connecting with nature, you feel like you're connecting with the whole world and you mm -hmm. feel like you're connecting to everyone that's on the earth because yeah. of nature. Yeah, that's beautifully said. That's so true. I think okay. that, yeah, that's essentially it is when you're connecting with nature, it's like you're connecting to the core of who you are mm -hmm. and with humanity. Yeah, it's yeah. Even, you have to have people around you. You just you just feel it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I see I see nature as you know the great teacher, and I feel like hopefully like we move forward in terms of like understanding even more of seeing nature as a teacher to us. You mm -hmm. know, as a really big teacher and incorporating nature's wisdom through like looking at the way that nature operates and the the behavior of nature and just embracing nature completely as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, through all my, I'm a yoga instructor and through so many of my classes, especially through the transition into winter, even though I'm in Florida right now, so it's not like that drastic. Um, there's still like that, that heaviness that kind of sets in, in winter time. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that like seasons are such a beautiful representation of, 
Ooh. of life and the stages that we go through. Like we are going to have our highs where we feel light and we're going to have maybe some darker times where we're going to want that coziness, that comfort, the safety. Okay. And it's just, if we could respect the outside world, we, we all know the seasons are going to come and go. We know the moon is going to come at night. We know the sun's going to come during the day. We're not complaining about it. We just know that that's going to happen and we accept it for what it is. Yeah. We kind of surrender to that. So I like to try to have students put that into themselves. If we could accept all of the phases, all of the variations that is living outside, mm. let's turn that into ourselves. Why can't we do that? Why can't we just embrace and accept and love our moon and our sun? Because like all of that is within our yeah or hearts yeah yes, absolutely i have i share the same exact perspective yeah and you know yeah through it helps us understand our own cycles when you see nature cycles mm -hmm. when you see you know winter and then you know you go see the spring and you see summer and and you know we we go through those cycles internally so it's like it makes us have compassion for ourselves like we don't mm -hmm. have to always be in like the summer state of right I, when i think mm -hmm. of summer, like active activity you know, a, you know, heightened energy. And then when I think of winter, I think of just a slower pace, more self mm -hmm. more turning inward. And so I think that is the beauty of understanding kind of like the yin yang and the ebb and flow of life. Yeah, nature, that's part of what's nature's teaching us. Mm -hmm. Ebb yeah. and flow cycles and just the up and the down, but then seeing that it all plays a part and a role in something greater. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I read um, that I wanted to share so my listeners can get like, a better understanding of like what you write is um, our shadow won't hold a dominant position when we are in control over our direction. I read that and I was like, okay, I cannot. I absolutely loved it. And I thought that that shed like, like that is exactly what I meant in the beginning of like, there are such few words in that, but you are telling like, an entire story. You are talking about like dark and light, yin and yang. You're talking about perspective. You're talking about like self empowerment, self reflection. <laughs> We're talking about so many concepts within something so small <laughs> that I freaking love it. I love it so much. And uh, it just is like fueling. And I just wanted to like share that with my listeners. Um, do you have any of your favorite like, um, do you have any favorites? I know everyone's like, it's like picking a favorite child. Like no one has a favorite child, but like, do you have a favorite part of your book or a section that kind of like is really you? Right, right. Um, let's see. I think, yeah, each part I feel like is just, it's equal to me. That's for sure. But mm -hmm. I, love, I love the section of the air a lot because I feel like with the air section, I kind of, I, I combined poems that I feel like it kind of, makes your mind not think so much in logic and kind mm -hmm. of it gives you um possibilities of just thinking of way thinking of things in an illogical way mm -hmm. you know so the air section is you know focus on the mind so i love doing like mind exercises where i'm kind of just um i kind of like to slow down like the logical mind to to increase the creative mind and like the um you know just um embracing symbolism i think mm -hmm. because i love symbolism so much and the more i don't focus so much on the logic the more i can understand symbols you know mm -hmm. so i would say maybe the air section speaks to me a lot um and then you know i also have like the water section which is kind of like it's helpful for me to understand the way we understand our emotions through you know water and through the ocean so in a sense i love because i have to have a process of expressing my emotions because i feel like i'm a very sensitive person so mm -hmm. To me, when I look at water and when I write about water and, you know, reflect on water, it just gives me an understanding of how do I handle my emotions, you know? Yeah. So th when things come to the surface, you know, how does water react? And also when you have to wait for water to calm down for you to see through the water, for it to, for it to be clear water, to, to look into the water, you have to wait for the water to calm down. You know, when, it's, mm -hmm. when there's so much water and there's a lot of waves and movement, sometimes you don't see the water clearly. So I look at that as that's what's beautiful about embracing men mental clarity and to having our emotions being stabilized to yeah. see things clearly. I love all of that. Oh, this is like warming my heart. It's making me so oh, happy. Yeah, Were you, did you go to school? I know that you went for uh, sociology, but did you mm -hmm. study any like writing or poetry or did it, was this just something that like 
was the calling. I did read in your blog, you talked about kind of being a channel. Yeah. In a way, which is something that I resonate with as mm -hmm. well in like different areas of my life. But so, so you never studied it and you just kind of were like, F it, I'm going to go and write a, write a poetry book. It's kind of crazy because my poetry book, I wasn't really, it wasn't consciously planned. Like I wasn't thinking like, oh, like I feel like writing a poetry book now. It more, mm -hmm. it's really kind of gradually where I, through my, you know, spiritual understanding and um, understanding myself and going through that transformation, I just started kind of taking notes and writing um, mm -hmm. like on my phone, just kind of, um, it was, it was a way of kind of understanding my inner world, you know? And so I was writing and expressing through the art. And I was just, I kept writing and I'm like, oh, wow, I have like a, a huge collection of writings. Maybe I can just put it into a book. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of just, I, it, it was kind of like looking back, I was like, oh, I could turn this into, into my book. And it felt, it felt like it was complete and it kind of created itself in a way. You oh. know? Yeah, it was kind of crazy. I was like, oh, wow. So I created a book without really knowing that, you know, I created a book. I was like, oh, I love it. Yeah. So I didn't have to, like, it's funny before, because I did have a desire in the past, like, oh, I'd love to write a book one day. And I did have that intention a long time ago. I didn't know how I'd do it. But I was like, I want to write about nature, you know, I want to write about nature. Mm -hmm. And then without even knowing through my, you know, um, just, you know, spending time alone with myself, I was writing them without realizing it. Mm -hmm. so, I love yeah. that. Yeah. But I, I've always loved to write in general. Like, you know, when I was in college and stuff, um, you know, I did get compliments from like my teacher about my writing but I never thought of myself as a writer I never mm -hmm. even thought I would write poetry or even you know I didn't even know I can write poetry at the time mm -hmm. so, yeah <laughs> it just came I with love it. what a cool story yeah. it came with just sharing through social media and seeing other people kind of resonate and connecting with it and I'm like okay I guess I guess I'm okay at doing this maybe I'll just continue you know <laughs> yeah dude that's awesome I'm so happy for you yeah. um since you are a highly sensitive person and i am a highly sensitive person i feel like i have questions to ask on like both a personal level and for um my listeners as well one i loved how you called it gold in yeah. one of the blog posts um because in the beginning it was definitely difficult uh to i think i think it's one of those things where oh you realize you have something <laughs> And you're kind of just like shocked, like, what am I supposed to do with this now? Um, so I do love how you called it gold because in the end, in the in the big picture, it is a gift. Right. Um, right. But as I mentioned before, I'm someone who does like to be understood, mm. which is something that I'm working on because I yeah. need to like find that detachment and not everyone's going to understand me and that's okay. Um, but how do you as a highly sensitive person find that detachment? Um, from you know being so empathetic and maybe not always having that received or yeah. like given to you right that's that's such a such a good and big question because that's definitely something that i've been focusing on in myself and to understand how i can do that and mm -hmm. i think in a way what's what's helped me is to know that like okay because i do have that i've ha have that same desire as you you know um so i look at it as i I need to just focus on understanding myself and not so much on being understood by others because mm -hmm. everybody, everybody's in the process of understanding themselves. So I can't, I can't count on others to, to feel understood. I need to do that myself, you know, within me. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly um, validating my own self. And, um, and I think I, I do it through the art and through the writing is, is, is because I'm, you know, writing down my reflections and I'm sharing my poems in a way, I feel like I'm giving myself that understanding, you know, and mm -hmm. ground, grounding that through the writings. So I think I just kind of, I see everybody as, you know, nobody's perfect. And I see myself as not perfect and just embracing that helps me to not have so much expectations of other people. Mm. And, you know, I think I think a lot of times it's because of we have expectations that we're doing that to ourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think eventually the more the more you do focus on, you know, validating yourself and understanding yourself, the more others will also reflect that back. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It is um, for people that don't know, highly a highly sensitive person is someone who is a highly sensitive person on uh basically every level it can vary from person to person it can be i know for me bright lights and loud noise and mm. big crowds i'm like triggered like i don't want to be in this space and mm -hmm. it just gives me a little bit of anxiety and it can also play into like relationship life um 
regardless of what kind of relationship where it may be harder for you to get over things because you are so much more deeply impacted by you know <laughs> how things may have happened yeah. um so yeah just for people that might not know what that kind of is how do you think that it has impacted your relationships with like whoever it doesn't have to be romantic but um just in general in general yeah like like yeah you explained it very well with sense with sensitivity i feel like because in the past i would be very sensitive to what every everything everyone is saying so i learned to kind of create like not so kind of like a boundary in a sense of seeing it as um like i detach from their responses to me mm, i see it great. as that's, I, I see it as just that's a reflection of them and it has nothing to do with me. I think just having that barrier where like knowing like I am my own person and they are their own person and what whatever they say, I get to choose what my relationship to that is. Mm. Kind of like I have to constantly remind myself that, okay, they're choosing to respond to me in that way or to, to, to be that way towards me, but they are them and I'm me. It's kind of like just focusing on like the individuality part of it and not mm. to at like surface level right away um and i think I, and I also i do spend a lot of time by myself i think it's important to do that is to to be able to ground your yeah. emotions and um and your mind and also to process things so i do a lot of journaling tons and tons of journaling mm -hmm. and then Love i journaling really, here <laughs> that's kind of where i started with writing and poetry is is, is just journaling you know yeah. um because i feel like it's such a, a good way to focus your mind and to process your emotions so you know, say I have interactions with people and say, you know, it might make, it might trigger something in me. I always take the time to go in my journal and just write about what I felt and write about what they said or why did it make me feel a certain way, you know, and you know, why did it trigger this part of me? And kind of just, I, I take everything as like a learning lesson, you know, mm -hmm. um, if it triggered me in a negative way, then I see that, okay, well, I have some growth to do in that. I have something to look at there. And mm -hmm. I try to look at it as appreciating them for that kind of reflection, you know, as hard as it is sometimes to, yeah. to, you know, sometimes it just really triggers you and you're like, why? But then I have to always remind myself like, no, 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 no. It's not about them. It's about me. You know, why mm -hmm. am I having that emotionally affect me? Mm -hmm. So it's really just kind of like a constant practice of doing that. And the more you do that, the more natural it becomes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, that reminded me of something when I was, going through like a time where I just needed to let go of resentment and start forgiving people. Mm -hmm. And it came down to like the power of one choice. I have the power to choose, like, am I going to sit here and make myself feel like crap <laughs> or am I, am I going to choose? Okay. They did that to me, but now I'm the one living with it and I don't want it anymore. So it's going to be removed. It's not going to take up space in me. And um like outside of even the power of choice just understanding on a soul level that that was probably meant to happen mm -hmm. any heartbreak that i've experienced was either something that my soul already agreed agreed to do of course and i'm like girl we didn't have to do this um it's yeah. either something that i chose a long time ago or you know yeah. wherever i was making that decision and also like that may have been a part of their journey like they may have had to do that to me in order to get where they have to go yeah and that's been a big help in in understanding that separation a little yeah. bit mm -hmm. um and helps me with resentment too because right. again like i'm so sensitive that like i i'm very aware of it too like i will soak it up and it's harder for me to let things go right um but in learning that all of it has been decided with our souls has yeah. been a huge help for me in realizing okay the like this was meant to happen like i chose this anyway awesome. um so now i'm gonna choose on this on this little playing field that i'm in right now how am i gonna react to it because i i chose this at some point anyway yes i'm gonna be mad at myself or mm -hmm. i'm not I'm exactly. gonna choose not to be mad at myself <laughs> I, I process things in the same way that you described exactly like it's kind of like this Part, part of you surrendering to not knowing, you know, and mm -hmm. surrendering to the higher self and seeing that there is a lesson here. And even if we mm -hmm. don't understand it now, or that it's this lesson has been um, part of, you know, planned as part of our journey. And so that's part of like not taking it so like personally and to not feel 
stuck in that negative energy and the emotions behind it and just seeing like, okay, this is here for a reason. Let me, let me use it for what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of, that's, what's beautiful about spirituality and, you know, awakening to it is to see that there's something greater than us and we're mm -hmm. not victims of anything. And I think that's the biggest thing is to just let go of victim mentality completely and just completely seeing yourself as an empowered being. And yeah, the mm -hmm. challenges will happen, they'll come along, but they're here to help you grow and to empower you, not to yeah. make you a victim. There's a, there's a teach, a greater teacher. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love all of your mindsets. They're like reminding me of the things that, that I know, mm -hmm. but also again, it's, it's a practice of implementing all of it because okay. I'm sure I could sit here and preach about all these, like, you know, good things and cool ideas that I know, but it's implementing it as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of like off topic, but I think that's why some people stray away from spirituality a little bit because mm -hmm. they feel that like, I don't know. I don't know where my mind was going with that. Like they stray away from it because they they hear so many people talking about big concepts, but it's it's not always a big concept. There was like a random thought that was in my head and that was it. And I was like, this isn't tying in, but I felt like I had to say yeah. it. Sorry. No, no, totally. No, yeah, no, it makes it makes so much sense. And I think that also sometimes it could, you know, turn people away if they're not ready yet to kind of fully embrace themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on an unconscious level, if you don't feel like you can if you don't have the the confidence and the, the peace to the inner peace to be able to approach yourself, sometimes it's just not, you know, a person's not ready yet to mm -hmm. do it. But like, you know, I think that sometimes it just comes in little, um, like little pieces here and there, kind of like how I told you about like my, you know, own awa awareness and awakening is just mm -hmm. concepts were introduced slowly and surely. And then when I was ready to actually put it into practice, then I started doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we'll get an you know the person will see these spiritual concepts maybe could be even repelled in the very beginning because it's like mm -hmm. foreign and it could cause a little bit of fear and uncertainty because you know so much of people's identities is tied into you know what they're used to thinking and, and believing so it can cause some fear or hesitancy in the beginning but then the more you know the idea is in their awareness the more it increases and then they start seeing other people talking about their experiencing experiences and then the fear decreases or it goes away completely and you're like oh there's nothing to fear here mm -hmm. you see the community that's here and the spiritual community you see how how much love it, there is in it yeah how connected spirituality and love is so there's nothing to fear within it yeah and, yeah and in the beginning there is so much discomfort i remember in the beginning i was just like why am I crying every day? What yeah. is going on? Yeah. And then once it started to all unfold, I was like, okay, I'm releasing some stuff and, and this is starting to feel really good. And then you start doing the work and you realize what was actually happening. But yeah. I could definitely see it being scary. It was slightly scary for me. I think I felt kind of protected mm -hmm. um, through it, which helped me, but I could see that, you know, going opposite for other people. Wow. Um, yeah. Do you have any spiritual practices that you do daily to kind of like one, protect yourself energetically um, yeah. and two, just kind of like, you know, anything fun that you do? Yeah, no, totally. I um, every single morning, you know, when I wake up, I, I love to listen to soothing relaxation sounds. Mm -hmm. um, I gravitate a lot to harp music, just playing like classical harp. I so that. I listen to, thank you. I listen to like classical and like kind of solfeggio frequencies to kind of just relax my body in the morning and just keep my mind um, in a positive state right away. And um, and so I, I use music a lot in, in terms of grounding myself and, um, you know, staying high in that, in those emotions of, of um, just staying aligned with myself. So I use, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of music. Um, and then I spend time by myself, really. Like I'll take like my journal and I'll go somewhere to write. I love to spend time in coffee shops. I love cafes. So yeah, that's like my yes. favorite place to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that's just my my vibe, you know. So I'll just go and I'll have like my headphones and I'm listening to music and just writing, you know, and just like mm -hmm. something and writing and that's my happy place, you know, or going into the nature and just looking at nature and listening to music and uh that's in my way of of, of staying in a in a healthy state and to mm -hmm. yeah, and to keep my vibrations high. <laughs> I love, it. I love it. So what do you do for work? Do you, are you a writer now full yeah. time? Right. Yeah. So I do like freelance here and there and do some writing. And also I do, sometimes I work on, um, uh, film sets. So I do some like extra work, 
uh, like as a background actor. <laughs> yeah. So I sometimes work in like movies and like TV shows. Um, so I work in that industry as well in the entertainment. That's industry. super cool. Are you are you planning on writing another book soon, or are you gonna let it kind of mm -hmm. unfold in the same way the last one did? Yeah, actually, I'm almost done with my second book right now. Which I'm super super excited about. Yeah, it's my second poetry book, and it's so different than my first one. And it and it also unfolded in the same way where I didn't know I was writing a book, and it kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. So um, it's almost done. Like like within hopefully like within a month, I should be releasing it soon. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, so I'm super excited. But yeah, I'm just focused on my writing and just continuing to write books. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of comes through. And also, I started a, uh, a, a clothing line called Poetic Nature. So yeah, it's <laughs> poeticnature.com. Yeah. So I, I basically, I love to um, combine art and writing. So I thought, oh, I would love to, to put it on clothing, on apparel, mm -hmm. and to kind of help people focus themselves in a way that it's as a reminder, you know, to mm -hmm. connect with nature and to connect with ourselves. So I want it to be like a nature centered poetry, embracing your emotions type of clothing line and kind of having that unconditional self love and feeling that like inspiration and a romantic on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. that's the, the, uh, the baby that I created with poetic nature. I just, I just started it within the last month. So that's so exciting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm super excited that my clothing line is released. So yeah, I guess I could, you know, I, I have my clothing line and then I have my book and then my second book, which is going to be released soon. Yeah. Is your second book, don't, you don't have to give all of it away, but is it focused on nature as well? Or is it like not even in that realm? It has definitely has nature in it. Uh, okay. But I would say, so the poems are a lot longer in it and it's kind of like mm -hmm. each one is written kind of like as a stream of consciousness and kind of mm -hmm. takes you into the present moment. Um, because when I'm writing it, I'm just completely, completely immersed in the moment and I let the words come through and each one is completely different. But I have it in, it's, it's also in four sections, kind of like if stars could speak. Mm -hmm. um, and I have it like the first section is the power of you and then I have the love of you. Um, and then I have awareness and presence. So it's it's essentially like a holistic type of poetry book where it helps people that are going through the spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. Because I, I I talk I write a lot about the spiritual awakening and also about staying present, about expanding awareness, about embracing, um, not being so hard on, not being so fixated on logic, but to open our minds beyond logic to allow mm -hmm. new awareness to come in and to allow our consciousness to expand. So I would say it's mostly focused on expanding consciousness um, and being in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Also connection with others and oneness with nature and ourselves. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I already know it's gonna be a hit. That makes me really excited. Oh, for so you. <laughs> and I have just like a, this is just a question coming from me. Um, how has it been with the publication process? Like, are you going through a publisher or are you doing it yourself? I'm doing it all myself. But of course, you know, I'm open to if somebody mm -hmm. approach me in terms of like publishing the books, um, but I'm completely self-published. And I love mm -hmm. I love that freedom that I've had of just not waiting for, um, you know, a publisher or someone to come in, but just getting it out as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, it's really powerful with social media because now you can just share everything and, you know, market yourself and reach yes. your audience, reach your audience that way. And I love that. And I'm and I'm fine and I'm happy with like the organic growth of just reaching people naturally. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just amazing now the tools that we have as writers and artists is just we can just do it ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. not have to wait and just yeah allow it to just get out into the world as soon as possible. Yeah, because because I'm writing a book and I'm trying to I'm going through like the editing process. So I'm letting a bunch of people read it. I'm taking my my step back now and you guys read it. You guys do what you think is is best, because obviously as you know, you need fresh eyes on things sometimes. Yeah. It's it's hard when you're reading the same things again and again. You're like, do I remember reading this? Do I remember writing this? I don't know if I'm copying stuff. Um, but yeah, that's why I was curious about the, the self-publishing because yeah. I'm I'm sure it's gonna be a, a question I may have for you in the future once it's yeah. all wrapped up. Yeah, anytime you have questions about it, I'd love to help. Yeah, thank definitely. you. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> And I was going to say, so what do your days look like now that you're a writer? Do you dedicate specific block time yeah. or just flow? Yeah, both. I, I say like I'm like a, a mix of both of just letting it flow, but then also dedicating time. Because mm -hmm. when, when it comes to creativity, it's almost like you can't 
have any restrictions on it and you have to yeah. just let it flow mm -hmm. um especially with like writing and inspiration i think what i focus on every single day is how can i be in an inspired state as much as i can mm -hmm. um, look at the day like i wake up and i just kind of reflect on what i'm feeling and saying okay how do what am i in the mood to do so much do am i in the mood to um right now like organize you know am i in the mood to edit am i in the mood to um create art you know digitally it's it's kind of like seeing on the daily basis what's where's my energy mostly going mm -hmm. also creating like a structure saying okay well today i'm gonna dedicate time to do this because this is what i feel like i want to do so it's kind of mm -hmm. like a of both but essentially yeah. it's all surround all centered around how can i stay inspired today you mm -hmm. know it's consuming other creativity it's consuming other art you know because it helps fuel your own creativity, you know, and yeah. reading people's writings. I love reading books, love to read your book. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's like, it's all of it, you know, like just fueling yourself and just keeping that fuel, but essentially mm -hmm. trying to stay in them. What, where, you know, where can I be most inspired? And for me, it's going out into nature. Um, it, for me, it's being by myself and listening to music and just, you know, journaling and writing. So doing, I mean, that, doing just all of it. Yeah, I love it. I love the balance of like, mm -hmm intuitive and listening to yourself and letting that flow but also being disciplined with yourself yeah. because i know working for yourself and kind of you know being your own boss mm -hmm. can create some meshed lines where it gets a little tricky um where you're you know i mean i know for me i'm i've just recently found a little bit better of a balance of um not overdoing it and working you know all day every day right. even if it's like oh I'm, I'm sitting on the couch watching tv but like i'm doing stuff on instagram and i'm editing videos yeah. but it's also dedicating proper actual time to doing it and and not mixing the relaxed time and your personal life with the work so i commend you for being like for finding that balance because i think it is important that we we first tune into ourselves what do i want to do today yeah. What am I capable of doing? And what am I going to do best? Yeah. How am I going to show best for, for my business, myself, my projects? Right. I'm just flowing with it and not second guessing it, exactly. which is super important. And not being like, well, I should be writing today. Yeah, but if, if your mind right now is not in the space to do that, but your mind is like, no, I want to work on the clothing brand. I have some mm -hmm. great ideas. It's just honoring and respecting yourself and saying, I know that I, I make good decisions. I know that. I'll be protected. I know I'll be good. Exactly. So, exactly. That. Yeah. It's about have, being your own best friend, you know, being mm -hmm. okay. If you're not, if you're not feeling like you can right now, write, And that's okay. And that's perfectly fine. It doesn't mean you're not going to get that inspiration later on. And mm -hmm. as you said, you just have to be kind to yourself and just go with the flow of, you know, of yourself. And I think taking steps, you know, making goals and setting goals and, and, and like little by little, it doesn't have to be so you know, future oriented, you know, mm -hmm. I think that helps because it relieves the pressure, you know, if we're thinking, yeah. oh, man, no, I need to be this way. It's okay. And sometimes allowing ourselves to naturally go into, into a more, into, into, into a flow of schedule for us. I think it can, it can be gradual too. It doesn't have to be like, okay, right now, all of a sudden, this is exactly how I'm going to be like, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to be from 5am to 6am. This is what I'm going to do. And, you know, it just kind of slowly yeah. seeing what works best for our bodies. Um, and taking it step by step sometimes too with habits, you know, it can just take some time to really get used to it and, and feeling comfortable in that way. And once and mm -hmm. once it is and it's set, you know, we don't have to be so harsh on ourselves and, you know, be so cold turkey about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I always like tell people that are finding difficulty getting into a groove or do have that issue of, of overworking or not scheduling time or not being able to listen to themselves. Mm -hmm. I always say like schedule time for yourself then like in your full day of work, if you're having trouble listening to like what you need, then schedule and like <laughs> take five minutes to go outside and breathe because then I feel like you build up like, oh shit, I did need this. And well, then you're training your body and your mind and just all of you to be like, huh, maybe, maybe this does need to be a part of my life. So exactly. Yeah. Just, it's like taking away that, like, you don't have to feel guilty if you don't feel like doing something and also mm -hmm. seeing, it, well, that's a part of that's contributing to what you have to give to others. Mm -hmm. You know, those breaks that you need, you need to be, you need to take those breaks or you need to, you know, have that time for yourself to be the best version that you want to be towards yeah. others. We yeah. need breaks. So I look at it as everything is a part of helping my end goal, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Like the, the, the self that you desire to be, it's all part of the process. So I don't like to, I, I wouldn't say to myself like, oh man, like 
I didn't spend enough time working on this today. I, I kind of reframe it in my mind like, no, 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 I needed to do that. I'm on time. I just kind of rephrase the words in my in my thoughts and just say, no, I needed to take the time. It's working out. I didn't need to finish that today. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I can do that tomorrow. Sometimes, you know, people are hard on themselves. And I, and I feel like that holds us back when we're hard on ourselves. It it, it restricts the flow. And it, once we are, yes. we're accepting towards ourselves, then you see it flows even more. Mm -hmm. Then it's like you could have a day where you don't even feel like doing anything and that's perfectly fine. And that's, yeah. you're kind of going into self-reflective mode. And then, then all of a sudden it goes, it flows throughout of that. And then you're back into active mode. But I think mm -hmm. we ourselves from that natural pro process when we're overthinking it or when we're, we start judging ourselves for it. That just, that just slows down, slows it down, you know, but yeah, we, yeah. Cycles, it's just a cycle and flow with it and appreciate for what it is. Then it flows very easily. Mm -hmm. And if we look at your book, like that's a perfect example of you took a break, you went outside, mm -hmm. you nourished yourself. You took a moment to just like you talked about the water, you took a moment to have that clarity in your mind. So you were able to see again. Yeah. Um, and that's so important because when we're bombarded with tasks of everyday life, even if it's, you know, making food, but we're, we're adding in so much stuff into our mind that how are we supposed to be creative? How are we supposed to see if we're full of fog? We're full of the, we're full of doing instead of being. Yes. And once we start nourishing, like I'm just going to be, then things are going to naturally come to you, but yeah. you can't like try to keep forcing things in a certain direction because then you're creating that that energetic block. Exactly. At that point. You're you're just not like it's a balance of being disciplined but also surrendering. And yes. being disciplined doesn't have to be I'm um, disciplined. It's it's being open to receive. It's being yeah. open to hear what you're meant to be doing and with yeah. that open channel then you can surrender because it's that's just like that. Cool. That's that so cool. I feel like the most it's and it's ironic because I feel like the most productive I've been is when I was in that surrender and flow or even like the most amazing things I've created and done has been through that surrender and flow. I never was like for, I never forced myself into it. Kind of how I told you mm -hmm. when the book kind of writing itself, it kind of naturally happened because I was, I was following my bliss in the, in the process of mm -hmm. you know, writing down what I was inspired to write. And then later on seeing it as, Oh, well, let me, you know, turn it into something. Mm -hmm. It was, it was never forced. And yeah, it's yeah. about, staying in that flow and surrendering to yourself and just be, like you said, it's state of being, you know, being mm -hmm. state versus doing. And I think sometimes it can be tricky because then you're like, Oh man, but I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. And then I always have to just remind myself like, no, 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 it's okay. Like just be in the state, you know, and mm -hmm. where you are right now. And I think that just takes practice, you know, um, you know, cause sometimes I can fall into that too, where I feel like I need to do, do, do mm -hmm. it's really just about being, because when you're in a state of being, what you're doing is coming from an authentic place. And then mm -hmm. that's, that's when it really makes a difference and it really shows and people can connect to it. People can yeah. feel it. They feel it when you're, when you're feeling it, you know, when you're not feeling it and you're just doing it to do it, it's like people just know. <laughs> yes, exactly. No, you're totally right. Totally right. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Like, cause just, you know, people feel it on an energetic you know, mm -hmm. level. And so you can't fool anyone when you're not in that state of flow. So yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah it's beautiful. And I think a big part is also asking yourself, like, why am I feeling like I have to do? And it's because of programming. It's because I'm not saying society is all to blame for it, but the society we live in right now is a big contribution to people feeling like I have to be productive. I have to overwork. I need to make money. Yeah. And so there's almost like a level of, shame and guilt of taking a break and relaxing there was like yeah. i mean i got off of that like social media space anyway but mm -hmm. for a while i don't i'm sure a lot of people are still in it but it's that like grind 24 7 if you're not grinding then then yeah. what are you doing and it's yeah. like we're just living like we're doing the thing that we're supposed to do we're not selling our souls to yeah. to do something we don't even want to do totally. um, just finding that like the realization within of like, I'm having this feeling of maybe low self-worth because mm -hmm. my self-worth has always been determined by the external world and how productive I could be. Yes. Yeah. Just recognizing that's no longer my journey. That's no longer a part of me. That's okay. It once was, and mm -hmm. that's okay. I honor that. I respect it. But, but now we're transitioning and, and now my self-worth is dependent on me 
and I'm, I'm worthy because I'm a human. Yes. And humans are worthy regardless of their productivity or not. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's, it's rooted in that deep, deep level. It's a form of insecurity when you feel like mm -hmm. you need to be a certain way or do a certain thing, you know, in terms of like an external, you know, achievement then, yeah. you know, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not focused on yourself. It's focused on others, you mm -hmm. know, and it, and it can be definitely rooted into that. And, you know, looking at it as feeling like I'm, I'm, I'm good the way that I am. I'm complete. I'm whole and complete. Mm -hmm. you know, any validation from the external wor world. And it, it, it is tricky with social media now, especially because it's all about followers and it's all about likes and it's all about, you know, getting it viral and all this stuff. Yeah. It, 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 it can trick people into being focused on the results or like how many people it's reaching where yeah, it's, yeah. it's taking away what it, what it's truly about. And it's about uh, ourselves connecting with ourselves and connecting mm -hmm. with them. And naturally when you're doing that, it's going to resonate with people and your information will get into the hands that people need it. And mm -hmm. that's, you know what I mean? Through the law of attraction and yeah. the universe, the universe will just connect you with the people that you need to be connected with naturally. We don't yeah. have to go fight for it you know you don't have to <laughs> you know fight for the likes fight for the followers it's just like mm -hmm. and that's what's beautiful is when you're in the self-empowered state you're not looking for that and it's all you're you're energetically feeding yourself you don't need it by looking at the likes by looking at the followers you're you're like no i don't need any of that mm -hmm. like i already know that i'm i'm this i don't need external exactly. validation exactly yeah totally. you are so good you have so many ideas i'm i'm feeling inspired just by talking to you so thank you for that um and time is running out and i always ask this question at the end which i love um so if you were in a room full of the entire world and they're all paying attention to you they're all openly listening what would you say oh wow I would say that it is possible we can live in a peaceful world. And I think mm. that if we focus on ourselves and to love ourselves unconditionally, we're able to connect with each other and we can create a really, really beautiful world. And I think that we can do it and we will do it. And it's within us, within our mm -hmm. near vicinity. And I think that we're powerful beings and I'm so excited to see where humanity can go within our self-empowerment. Oh, <laughs> I think the world would be like shedding a little tear. Once you said peace, I was like, oh my gosh, okay, yeah, she's right. Let's be empowered and love each other and hug. <laughs> I mean, you know, essentially it's like, you know, I, I just think it's so powerful how everybody's powerful in their own way. Mm -hmm. and when we come together as powerful beings. We can see how we can change the world in that way and how we can live in a new world that can be more reflective of our self empowerment. And it just gets me excited for that. Yeah. You got me excited for it. So thank <laughs> you. You're part of it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, so where can people find you? Where can they buy your book? Where can they buy the clothes that you're making? Where can they find your social media? All that fun stuff. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, for my website, I have it's www.nataliapoetry.com. N-A-T-A-L-I-A poetry.com. That's where I'll share all of my latest in terms of links to my book or books when I have my new one that comes out. Um, so I have my website and then I'm also, my book is on amazon.com. So if you just search if stars could speak or search my full name, Natalia Beshkoi, um, you can find me there. It's also on the Barnes and Nobles uh, website as well. And uh, for my clothing line, it's uh, poeticnature.com. So just poeticnature.com. And I'm on Instagram. My Instagram user is Natalia Poetry underscore. So you can find me on Instagram. I'm also on Pinterest. Um, my username is Natalia Poetry. So I under Natalia Poetry, you can kind of find me in different places. Yeah. I'm also on TikTok, which I also want to focus um, this year, like kind of, you know, post some content on there as well. Mm -hmm. Poetry. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm so uncomfortable with TikTok, so I get it. <laughs> I'm just so difficult with TikTok. I'm like reluctantly posting it all the time. I'm like, this is so difficult for me. Um, <laughs> but that's that's totally off topic. Everyone should go check out her stuff. Definitely look at the Instagram because I got so much good insight just from just from scrolling through. So thank you, You've been so amazing to speak with. I'm excited to hopefully connect with you again you. um and i'm wishing you all the best with your book and how all of that unfolds and 
I'm very excited for you to live out that like romantic writer's lifestyle because I feel it for you and I I could I I just feel it in me for you and it's it's giving me such a big smile. So all good things are making their way to you and everything that's meant for you is finding you. I feel it in my bones. So thank you so much. And I want to send you a signed copy of my book. So ah! you can just email me your uh, address. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Yeah, I would love that. I'll email you right after this. <laughs> thank you so much for everything. Thank I really you. you. Such a great time. Thank you for having me on your amazing podcast. Oh, I appreciate it. I love and I'm subscribed to, and I'm so excited to see where you're going with this. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so inspirational, and it's amazing what you're doing. Thank you so much. You've had such a big smile on my face. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, Gabriella. Bye.